On June 11, 2017, agents of the Immigration and Customs Enforcement, or ICE, began rounding up Iraqi Christians, Assyrians of the Chaldean Catholic Church mainly, in order to deport them back to Iraq. American media outlets were reporting that at least 30 men are being held at a detention center in Youngstown, Ohio. ICE made the following statement to media outlets. As a result of recent negotiations between the U.S. and Iraq, Iraq has recently agreed to accept a number of Iraqi nationals subject to orders of removal. As part of ICE's effort to process the backlog of these individuals, the agency recently arrested a number of Iraqi nationals, all of whom had criminal convictions for crimes including homicide, rape, aggravated assault, kidnapping, burglary, drug trafficking, robbery, sex assault, weapons violations, and other offenses. Each of these individuals received full and fair immigration proceedings, after which a federal immigration judge found them ineligible for any form of relief under U.S. law and ordered them removed. The issue is very complex because some are guilty of serious crimes, while others are guilty of minor crimes committed long ago. However, regardless of what crimes these Assyrians committed and when they committed them, sending them back to Iraq represents a complete disregard for the conditions facing Christian Assyrians. On June 6, 2017, the U.S. House of Representatives passed the Iraq and Syria Genocide Emergency Relief and Accountability Act. The act states, Congress finds the following. Religious and ethnic minorities in Iraq and Syria are persecuted groups, and the Secretary of State declared on March 17, 2016, that Daesh, also known as the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria, or ISIS, was responsible for genocide, crimes against humanity, and other atrocity crimes against several of these groups, including Christians and Yazidis. The U.S. government's willingness to send Christian Assyrians back to Iraq at a time when the elected representatives of the U.S. government agree that Assyrians are victims of genocide or face imminent suffering and risk demonstrate to the Assyrian people that they cannot ever assume or rely on the goodwill, support, and friendship of other nations and foreign governments. The Assyrian people must find ways to always empower themselves and address their own security, economic, social, and political risks. Allowing foreign governments the sole capacity to determine our fate can and does come with great risk and harm. More importantly, trusting in U.S. presidents has never produced a sustainable solution for Christian Assyrians. President George W. Bush once said the following about Iraqi elections in 2005. The Iraqi people themselves made this election a resounding success. However, the U.S. Department of State's annual human rights report said the following. Many residents on the Ninua Plain, who were mostly non-Muslim, were unable to vote in the January elections. According to the Assyrian International News Agency, only 93 of 330 polling places opened, ballot boxes were not delivered, and incidents of voter fraud and intimidation occurred. This resulted from administrative breakdowns on voting day and the refusal of Kurdish security forces to allow ballot boxes to pass to predominantly Christian villages, denying as many as 100,000 Assyrian Christians and a smaller number of Sabians of their right to vote in the elections. After an investigation of these allegations, the Independent Electoral Commission of Iraq, IECI, acknowledged that the voting facilities in Nineveh were inadequate. The IECI claimed that these irregularities were a manifestation of the poor security situation in Nineveh, Anbar, and other regions and not a problem that exclusively affected a particular segment of the population. President George W. Bush was not willing to support Assyrians in the way that Assyrians needed or deserved. When President Barack Obama was a senator from Illinois, he wrote two letters to Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice indicating that the severe violation of religious freedom faced by members of these indigenous communities and their potential extinction from their ancient homeland 
is deeply alarming in light of our mission to bring freedom to the Iraqi people. These crises demand an urgent response from our government. In March 2016, when Barack Obama was president, his administration recognized that Christian Assyrians were facing genocide, but his government officially declared that the recognition of genocide would not lead the U.S. government to taking any specific action to help Assyrians and other victims of genocide. We have proven our willingness to step in and prevent acts of genocide, State Department spokesman John Kirby said, citing the August 2014 U.S. military rescue of stranded Yazidis on Mount Sinjar in Iraq. Is it going to trigger something new? No, but it very much is part and parcel of the way we have been thinking about this conflict for nigh on over a year. President Barack Obama was not willing to support Assyrians in the way that Assyrians needed or deserved. President Donald Trump is now also falling into a pattern of behavior that Assyrians have seen since at least 2005 from U.S. presidents. It is time that Assyrians and especially Assyrian Americans begin learning lessons from recent history and learn to always develop their strength in order to help themselves. Assyrians cannot rely on anyone else for support and must develop the capacity to help themselves.